Hi, Austin Roberts with the Log Ox, and today I'm going to show you a better way to process a fallen tree like the one right here, all the way from the roots to the leaves, using just this, the patented Log Ox 3-in-1 forestry multi-tool, and your trusty chainsaw. So the tree we've chosen to work with today is actually a windfell tree that came down over the winter. And it's a little bit different than the usual trees you'd be working with because with this, as you can see here, it took the entire root bulb with it. So now you have several hundred pounds of dirt uh, and root that actually is causing this tree to be under a tremendous amount of tension right now. So if you were to start by making your cuts further up the tree, it would literally tilt backwards and you'd have sort of a, uh, a half standing up tree. So what we want to do here is we want to make our cuts about three quarters of the way through, down the length of the tree till we get to a certain point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to release this here with an uppercut and then we're going to use our log ox cant hook to roll it over and finish up those cuts. I'm going to show you how that works here in just a minute. So a key part of working safely is nice having a nice sharp chain on your chainsaw. And the way you can tell that is by looking at the chips that come from it. As you can see from these, we got some nice long chips here. And when it starts to turn into sawdust, that's when you know you need to resharpen your chain. But one of the benefits of having the log ox is that when we are able to roll it over or lift it up, you're not going to be running your chain into the ground and dulling it out, and that's going to save you a lot of time. So we just attached the root bulb from the rest of the tree, and now what we're going to do before we process it is essentially cut it up into thirds. We're going to cut this third right here, okay, and before we detach the tree from the root bulb and release the tree, we stuck this small log underneath it to give it a little bit more clearance so we can work making our final cuts. Okay, so at this point we've detached the base of the tree from the root bulb and we've also made a cut further up the tree that now has detached the centerpiece of the thirds that we're cutting the tree into. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the can handle extension to the log ox hauler using this clevis pin. Slides through. Well, we seat the hairpin. And with the can hook, you can either roll towards you or you can roll away. Because of the way the tree here is situated, we're going to actually push the tree forward and away from us using the underhand method. It's going to look like this. And now what that's done for me is it's exposed this backside here and I can just finish my cuts safely. Okay, before we go on to bucking up the rest of this log round, I want to show you something really quickly here. When you're looking at the forest floor and you start to see patches of moss like this, there's a very good chance that right below it is a rock. So here, we'll pull this back a little bit, and lo and behold, we've got a rock here. That's really gonna dig up your chain and mess up your day, might even break it. So just something to be cognizant of. Okay, so now that we've already bucked up the stove length log rounds on the other two thirds of the tree, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take care of the top of the tree, all right? And what we're gonna do first is it's gonna be limiting it and allow us to be able to have a little bit more maneuverability when we use the log ox as a timber jack to buck up the rest of this. There's still a lot of really good firewood in here. What this hauler is great for as well is a short can hook. It's about 21 inches in length, and we're able to take this and use it to roll the tree over and access the back portion of that to be able to finish our cuts. Before we do that, I want to show you this real quick. Up here towards the top, we have a branch when we were cleaning up the top ends that we had to cut, and now it's blocking our way. Now, instead of having to bend over and pick that up, we're going to use our upper body. Just lift it slightly, drag it out of the way. Again, without bending over, it's able to just move that nicely and out of our way. Get to the middle of the log here, engage it, get a good footing. Use it to be able to roll it over, and now we can access the backside and finish up our cuts. What's great about this is it has this nice horizontal handle that I'm able to grip and really put a lot of leverage into. Also, the base here, um, you're never gonna have to replace this. It's nice and wide and broad. It really bites in nicely. And then just the chisel tip, this is actually ground a ground finish to it. it makes it really nice and sharp and that bites into it. You know, a lot of uh, portable sawmill 
owners and operators have remarked how they like to have this bites and really holds true to the log every time they use it. So we've worked our way up to the top third of the tree and we're dealing with a little bit smaller diameter logs here, but there's still some great firewood to be had. Now we want to continue to protect our chain from running into the ground and that actually happens a lot faster when you're dealing with smaller diameter wood. So what we want to do here, instead of using the cant hook to make our half cuts and roll it over, we're just going to lift the entire log up off the ground using this, the timber jack. And what we've done here is we've affixed using the same two type of clevis pins, the timber jack to the bottom of the log ox hauler. We're going to come about three quarters of the way down, drop it over, roll back, and this creates a nice steady, solid cutting platform that you can now make your cuts completely. And instead of repositioning the timber jack like some folks do, we're just going to make cuts here, here, all the way down, the same way we did with the can hook. And then we're going to release the log, roll it over, and then finish those cuts. Okay, so now that I've made my cuts, I've made my clean cuts on this side, I'm ready to roll it over. Just note that when I was doing that, I was standing always on this side, on the same side as the timber jack, and that'll give you a lot more stability when you're doing it. So what we'll do is we'll lift it up. And sometimes this might release and roll completely over. If not, give it a little push with your foot, or use the can hook to just give it a little bit of an extra wedge. Just depends on what kind of ground you're working with. Okay, now I'd like to show you what is one of the coolest and most back-saving portions of this tool, and that is the log ox hauler here. We've removed the timber jack attachment, we've removed the can handle extension, and now we're just left with the hauler and all the logs that we've just bucked up in a row here that we now have to yard out and move over to our pile. So first, let me show you a couple of release techniques and why this is so important. Previously, every single time you wanted to pick something up, you're having to bend over, you're using your lower back, basically doing a bad deadlift that puts a lot a stress and strain on your lumbar spine, okay? With the log ox hauler, slight bend to the knees, engages it, and now it's nicely balanced by my side, and I can move this without straining my back. So as I move towards my pile here, I want to toss into this pile. There's a couple of different techniques I'll show you. One is, see this gap right here? Put your finger under the gap, release like that, okay? The other technique, this is simply push it like that. You can give it a little bit of a toss into your pile. Or you can walk up to the pile, bump the nose, and that will release it as well. Another great thing you're gonna notice is as soon as you start using the log ox hauler is just how much faster it is to actually yard out the logs themselves because you're cutting out the time it takes for you to continually bend over. So let me show you how that works real quick. Basically, as soon as I walk up to a log, I'm just dropping this over and barely without even breaking stride, I'm now walking away. Toss it into my pile, come back, grab another piece. Again, not bending over, not hurting my back, keeping this nicely balanced by my side. I can toss it into my pile, wherever that may be. We get asked a lot, what is the range of the actual hauler in terms of what it can pick up? So, we see now we're able to easily pick up logs such as this. But we're also able to, when we get to the top of the tree, pick up smaller logs like this. Now this log right here will burn for hours in your stove, and it's great, you don't want to waste this kind of logs. But it makes it a lot of log rounds for you to pick up. So it's great as I can put some under my arm, grab a couple here, and save myself a trip to my pile by consolidating that and then just grabbing a few pieces more. Okay, so we've already shown how the log ox hauler can make it easy to move medium and small size log rounds. But now we're down towards the base of the tree and we're working with log rounds that are about 17, 18 inches or so in diameter. Okay, it's a little bit too heavy for us to just pick up and hold by our side. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to bend over and pick this up and try to move it to our vertical splitter or hydraulic lift. We don't want to roll it across the forest floor like a giant wooden snowball. So I'm going to show you what we're doing. Use the sharp can hook point and base to really lock into it. I'm going to use my upper body, my leg strength, and I'm just going to drag this across the forest floor, 
wherever I want to go. Again, using my upper body strength, my leg muscles. And then just simply flip it vertically wherever I want to go. Holster my log ox hauler and operate my vertical splitter or the hydraulic lift. Now another place where the log ox hauler is really going to help save your back is when you're loading and feeding a log splitter all day. Now everybody knows how that repetitive nature of bending over, picking up log rounds, putting them on the splitter, that's really going to hurt your back and you're going to be feeling that at the end of the day. But with this, the log ox hauler, what we're able to do, just like when we were yarding out the log rounds, come up to it, simply drop it over, it engages, and we could actually use the forward momentum of the log to swing it up onto our log splitter. Then we're going to holster it using this custom holster that we invented. It holds this nicely in place and allows our hands to be free to operate the log splitter. And grab another piece. For a slightly larger log, log round like this, what we recommend doing is coming close to it, bending at the knees. Nice baseball stance. Picking it up, putting it up onto the log splitter, reholstering it. But again, even with a larger log round like this, I'm not bending over, picking it up, putting a lot of strain on my back. If you don't have a, a, horizontal, or a vertical splitter, or a hydraulic arm available, you get a large log like this, hey, you gotta move it. So, I recommend doing the same, a little bit more exaggerated version of what we just did. Locking in like this. And you're still able to pick up a log about this diameter and operate your log splitter. Now, another bonus feature of the log ox hauler that homeowners, arborists, and guys who do a lot of tree removal work really appreciate about it is the fact that you can use it to haul brush away. Now, when you get to the top of the tree, like you see here, it creates a lot of brush from the treetops themselves. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to haul that away to a pile, a chipper, somewhere consolidated and out of the way. So we'll show you what we can do here to actually consolidate a couple of branches like these ones right here. You've got a nice steady hold and grip on it. And I can actually consolidate multiple pieces and drag them away, break them free from that pile, and get them over to where I want them to go a lot faster. So as we've seen today, the strength and the back-saving versatility of the Logox 3-in-1 Forestry Multi-Tool really makes it stand out amongst other forestry tools on the market today. But what really puts it ahead of its peers is the fact that you're able to take it apart, and now you've got a 21-inch can hook, the extension to make it a 38-inch can hook, Timber jack, your holster, some gear, a little put it into this American made forestry bag, sling it up on your shoulders, grab your other bit of kit, and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching, we hope you've enjoyed it. We are American Tools for Woodsmen, and as always, here at Log Ox, we've got your back. I think one of my favorite uses for it is actually at the log splitter. Instead of swinging a pick after a long hard day, they have a nice little holster you can put on your side. That way the tool is always at your fingertips and you can easily pick up logs without putting yourself in any danger. I've had an opportunity to work with one of these for about a year now. Absolutely love this tool, especially if you're someone that works out the back of a pickup truck. This is a must have tool. I don't know about you, but at least for myself, a lot of times I'm already a little worn out when it comes time to get the wood split. I've spent the time out there cutting, getting it hauled out of the woods, and uh, swinging around a picker room, there is definitely a little bit of a risk that's involved in it. You have to be uh, paying attention to what you're doing. And this tool takes a lot of that danger right out of the picture. My name is Hans Thielman. I'm a licensed tree expert and professional arborist. Uh, today I want to talk about the Log Ox three-in-one forestry tool. Um, it's versatile, ergonomic, and it's definitely something that I recommend keeping in your toolbox. I keep it in my truck. Uh, whenever I need it, I have it. It's modular. Uh, 
cant hook, timber jack, log hauler. Um, I'm about to show you uh, how I cut up this log that fell at my house and just how to uh, manipulate it without using a, a machine. As you can see, I was able to roll that 14 foot log, uh, black locust, up uh, incline with the leverage of the 38 inch can hook extension. This is Tommy with Alderman Farms. I'm about to show you the most back-saving device that I've ever seen. It's how this device is, it will save your back more than anything you've ever seen if you have to work with logs and timbers. My back is not tired at all because I didn't have to bend over one time. Barely had to dip my knees a little bit to reach the small logs to pick them up. Um, and you saw I was even able to pick up some large, oddly shaped pieces of wood. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, Logox has no idea that I'm making this video. I will share it with them because I want them to know how pleased I am with this purchase and with, the, with their, the quality of their merchandise and with their um, excellent customer service. Mitch and Danny here with Deadwood Revival. Uh, we received some log oxes last week. We've been putting them to the test. We picked up this log last week and we're gonna have to try to push it, roll it out of here because we don't want the slabs to fall out if we dump the dump trailer. So we're gonna try to roll that thing out. These log oxes have proven to be strong so far. Let's see what they got. This is a pretty tough task. So with no match, log ox. It's incredible how much weight these things can move. We've had PVs before and they just snap. They snap. Uh, the log ox held up. So, incredible tool. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. 